So I'm a diet doctor, which essentially means when people hear what I do, they kind of cower over their plates and, and try to hide their french fries. <laughs> but don't worry about it, that's not what I do. I don't believe in wagging my finger and telling you what you should eat and what you shouldn't eat. And quite frankly, I eat more french fries than most of you anyway. So please, relax, eat your food, and let's talk about something that's important to all of us, children. One of the most fascinating studies I've ever seen showed that more parents are hesitant to talk to kids about weight than talking about sex, drugs, and alcohol combined. My jaw hit the floor when I first saw that, just like many of you. I think it's because we never learned how to do it. I certainly didn't learn when I became a parent, and I definitely didn't learn it in medical school. So I got together with a bunch of colleagues of mine, and we wrote a great resource on it. It's called The Weigh-In Guide, and it, it does just that. It tells you how to talk to kids about weight. It's free, it's a great resource. Just Google my name and it'll come up. Download it, take a look at it. I think it'll be a really interesting read and really helpful for you if you have kids or any loved one who may struggle in this area. But I don't think talking points are enough. I want to offer you four big picture insights that'll help you think about this issue and frame your, your discussions with kids about this. First, we live in a society that essentially sets us up for weight gain and poor health. By default, the unhealthiest and highest calorie foods are the cheapest foods. They're the most convenient foods. They tend to be the largest portion foods. They're the most heavily advertised foods. They're engineered to be the tastiest foods, and they're marketed to be the most fun foods. And kids are particularly susceptible to all this. They're essentially sitting ducks. So this is why I, I donate so much of my time to doing policy work and advocacy work in this area. If we can create supportive environments that make it just a little bit easier to be healthy, then everybody wins. It's a really important area to think about. Next, always think about health, not appearance. This isn't a euphemism. The outward appearance of excess weight gain is a red herring. Obesity is a health issue. Studies show that kids with obesity have at least as impaired quality of life as kids with cancer. It's partly because when you have cancer, people treat you with the utmost of respect and love and compassion. When you have obesity, often people shame you and blame you and ridicule you for the way that you look. It's absolutely heartbreaking. So think about that one as well. It's really important. Next, always focus on behaviors rather than weight. Having excess weight isn't an actionable behavior. It's a result of many behaviors, as well as our biologies and our psychologies and our environments and literally hundreds of other things. So telling someone to just lose weight is essentially as nebulous as telling someone who's depressed to just cheer up. It offers no therapeutic leverage. Instead, think about what I call the ABGs. Should be ABCs, if you squint a little bit, it'll work. I just couldn't come up with a C. A, actionable behaviors. Talk to kids about things that you can directly do, like go for a bike ride together, or take a healthy cooking class together. B, be specific. Telling your child to go clean his room is not nearly as productive as asking him to put his shoes away and make his bed. And C, get their input. Get them involved in the decision-making process because it builds their autonomy and buy-in. And finally, think about baseball rather than archery. Let me, let me explain to you what I mean by that. Archery is about accuracy, precision, perfection. It's intense. In baseball, on the other hand, if you get a hit 30% of the time, you're an all-star. <laughs> Babe Ruth struck out one in every seven times he came to the plate, and he's the best baseball player that ever walked the face of the earth. 
We make more than 200 food decisions every single day. It's paralyzing to think that you have to always choose broccoli over bacon. You don't. There's nothing beneficial about doing that every single time. It's not possible. So what we want to do is help kids is help kids understand that there's all sorts of ups and downs and lefts and rights and backs and forths and zigs and zags in weight management as well as in life and help them build an approach to navigate all those backs and forths without needing to be perfect if we can do that we're doing so much for them and and it's especially important for us to remember that ourselves. What I see in the clinic over and over and over again is parents who love their kids so much and they're so anxious about their kids' weight and their kids' health that they overwhelm their kids expecting them to be perfect with every food decision and every time they go out running or or anything like that. So this may be helpful to help you step back from this. The best evidence we have for helping kids with health is helping them get out of adolescence at the healthiest weight possible. And that means that they don't have to do it today. They don't have to do it this month, maybe not even all this year. It means that we can help them make smart, slow, tangible and reasonable steps forward so that they can build a platform for their lifelong health and weight. Thank you very much.